go. And I was laying flat on my back. And the doctor said if they went in through the back, that I would be paralyzed today. So they decided to go through the front of my neck. And in going through the front, they stretched my vocal cords. And the doctor said I would be hard for eight or longer, eight months or longer. And I want to let you know tonight that while I was on my your neighbor say it's in your praise. Oh, come on, look at somebody say it's in your praise. Come on, it's in your praise. Come on, help us in. It's in your praise. Come on. It's in your praise. Come on. It's in your praise. Your healing. It's in your praise. Your deliverance. It's in your praise. Your healing. It's in your praise. Your healing. Your healing. Thank you, thank you. Thank God for life, Church of God in Christ, praise singers. And now we are ready for the inspirational message from one of the finest young men in our church. Know how to work with people to receive the Holy Ghost. A preacher in his own right, Elder Charles Hughes. We honor the Lord tonight. We bless the name of the Lord tonight. We thank God for salvation. We thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. We thank God for this new year. With all respect and honor to our bishop, we want to thank God for our bishop, our pastor, and our friend. Praise God for the bishop. Put your hands together. Praise the Lord. We certainly thank God for our sainted mother, Mother Lewis, tonight. Praise God for her. Let's praise God for Mother Lewis. And I would just like to just take a moment and have the most beautiful lady in the whole world to stand, my wife. Would you just stand, Sister Hughes? Praise God. Amen. God bless you. Someone who has walked with you for 36 years. Amen giving you five children and three grandchildren, amen? amen. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. It's all right to honor them. And we thank God for all of these pastors and these superintendents and all of you, my father's children. Well, you will have to pray for me. I'm what is called a pinch hitter, amen? But I believe the Lord has given me a word that it will require your participation on tonight. 
I thank God for this new year, this new millennium, amen, this new century. And I just believe down in my spirit that if the Lord is telling us anything at all about this new year, that it will be a year that will bring about change. And it will be a year of positioning us for that change. Amen? Would you stand to your feet with me? This might seem a little unusual. Thank you, Pastor Gibson, for that scripture that confirmed it. Thank you, praise team, for those praises that confirmed it. If there's someone that is seated next to you, that is, would you help them up? I wonder what would happen if the whole house got together in what is called corporate praise. I just wonder what would happen. Oh, you're looking good. And you came a long way to get here. And you're here. And since we're here, I wonder what is it he wants us to be about. Would you open your Bibles with me to Psalms 134? And we're going to cause the devil to literally, oh, I don't want just to cause him to tremble. We're going to cause him to back up. Amen? We're going to cause him to go another way. Psalms 134. And would you repeat with me? Behold, Behold. Bless, the Lord. bless the Lord. All you servants, All you servants. are workers, workers. Of, the Lord, of the Lord who by night Stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and do what? And bless the Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth. Bless you from Zion. Now normally after the reading of the word, is everyone standing? You would take your seat. But I don't want you to take your seat. Because the Bible says, tells us in James not only to be hearers of the word, but to be doers of the word. And I thank God for the ministry of the prayer room because one thing about the ministry of the prayer room, it's a result-oriented ministry. I mean, you come there to receive. Receive what? Salvation. You come there to receive. Receive what? The infilling of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Thank God for the written word. But I believe that God is going to turn a corner. Amen? Or cause us to turn a corner because how many know he doesn't change? Oh, he doesn't change. Behold, he says, I am the Lord and I change not. But the change is going to be in us. Amen? He's going to change us and position us to get the blessing. He's going to bless us, but it won't be one of those anyhow blessings. It's going to be on an on-purpose blessing. And to receive the blessing, you will have to be in the right position. Amen. Now you're almost there. Is everybody standing? Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Some years ago, I used to have a position where I was in a courthouse all the time this court, that court, this court, that court. And we would give an opening and we would say, Judge so-and-so is entering the room, all persons stand. That's in a man's natural court. But look around you. Look whose court you're in now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I want you just to lift your hands. Hallelujah. You see, what he's doing is he's positioning you for the blessing. The theme says yes to the king and yes to the kingdom. And there's something about lifting the hand that shows I'm no longer resisting, 
But by lifting my hands all over the room on one accord, something happens when believers get on one accord, one purpose. You know, we're always looking for a blessing. But the Lord says, I want you to bless me. I want you to bless me. Oh, I know your leg might be hurting. And some of you now are wondering, why am I standing so long? I'm in the position of a blessing. Hey, boss, see. I know this is not normal, but he's changing you in this new millennium. Because he wants to bless you. Oh, I bless his name. Now, just lift those hands. I just wonder, I know you left home headed for church. But I just wonder, was it guaranteed you were going to get here? I just wonder, can you think of anything you ought to give him some glory for? I just wonder, can you think of anything the Lord has done for you? Oh, you looking good. You sounding good. I wonder, can they hear us on Crenshaw? I wonder, can he hear us in glory? Oh, I will bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me rush on here. But I want you to keep your hands. Now, here's what we tell folk in the prayer room. If it gets too heavy this way, then put it in a cup form. And let your elbows rest on that extra weight on the side. Ah, keep standing. Your healing is in your praise. The praise team told us your deliverance is in your praise. I know it doesn't seem right to bless him, but he said, bless me and see what I will do. See if I won't open the windows of heaven unto you. What do you need from the Lord? Don't ask for the thing. Just bless the blesser. Bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. And the psalmist said in Psalms 34, remain standing. You say, why are you keeping us standing? Because court is still in session. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Revelation said they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their confession. You gotta say it. You ought to be able to tell God thank you. You ought to tell him glory. Oh, let it ring out from here. Now here's the key. Here's the key. See, he's just positioning us. This is not just what we do while we're in here, but look, look check this out. His praise in Psalm 34 shall continually be in my mouth, my soul. That's your mind. You know, change needs to begin in the mind. This year, God's going to get rid of what's called stinking thinking. Amen? Because as a man thinketh, so is he. But if God can affect your mind, hey, hey, change is on the way. So the Bible says, my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. I'm not going to boast because of how many members I have. I'm not going to boast because of this or boast because of that. But I'm going to boast in the Lord. And then what's going to happen? The humble shall hear of it and be glad. That kind of sounds like what Jesus said. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Here's what I like. Here's what I like. And this is why we got to get together on this. I like to just give the devil a migraine just to terminate him. Oh, if the devil's riding your back, lift your hands and give God praise. He can't ride a straight back. He can't ride a straight back. Now watch this. Look at verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. 
and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. Did anybody here seek him? Did anybody here seek him? Did he hear you? He said, you draw nigh to me, I'll do what? Draw nigh to you. I'm almost through. Now you got to understand, this is just the beginning of this. Brother pastors, I challenge you in your church to have a time that you call bless God time. A time you just radical in your praise. Just get crazy in your praise. Just go to remembering what God has done for you. And go to giving God glory in the midst of situations. Go with me to a couple more scriptures. My time is just running away here. I want to go to Psalms 107. And if I don't get to all these scriptures, you just write them down. Psalms 107, verses 1 and 2. Then we want to go to Psalms 100, verses 1 and 5. You just begin to recite and to go over these scriptures and begin to speak them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Psalms 107 verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Why do we have to thank him for anything? Because he is good for his mercy endures how long? Verse 2, get ready. Now, I don't want nobody acting up but the redeemed. If you're not redeemed, you just, you just, you just well, if you're not redeemed, you know what? You can still praise him. Because the Bible says that everything that has breath, praise him. The roaches can praise him. The rats can praise him. The stones will praise him. Well, verse 2, let the what? Let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Say so. Why? Because he has redeemed us from the very hand of the enemy. Go quickly with me to Psalms 100, verses 1 through 5. Praise God. We just blessing him. We just positioning ourselves for the blessing. Amen. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. That's what we've done. That's what we're doing. Know that the Lord, he is who? God. It is he who has what? Made us. You mean we didn't make ourselves? You mean we are his people and the sheep of his pasture? Enter into his what? Gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we're not through yet. I'm just going to sit down, but we're not through. How many know it takes more than just a good start? It's going to be a continuation. And what's going to happen is that you continue to bless him and praise him. Your miracle is going to show up. Oh, the preacher said last night, between the prophecy and the promise, well, this is the year of the manifestation. And your manifestation is in your praise. See, because if you believe that God not only is going to do it, but has done it, then you will make your mouth say thank you. You'll say thank you before it shows up. You'll say thank you before it shows up. And it's in your thank you, it's in your praise that your deliverance is there. Oh, bless the Lord. One more time, everybody. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord.
to be translated to heaven right now, many of us would feel so unfamiliar with the atmosphere. Because in heaven, there is jumping, there is shouting, there is praising, there is lifting of our voice, magnifying the name of Jesus. Come on, everybody, let's obey the word of the Lord tonight, and let's give him a corporate praise, a corporate worship, because he's worthy.
shall continually be in my mouth. Glory, glory, glory. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. We certainly thank the Lord for the inspirational message. Taking us in praise, taking us in the worship of the Lord from Elder Hughes. Thank the Lord for the incoming of our bishop, Shaley. I honor him and the administrative assistants and the superintendents and all of the pastors, Mother Lewis and all of her staff and all of you, the people of the Lord. It's just so good to be here in this workers' meeting. I've been blessed and I've been helped in this great meeting. Are you being blessed? Amen. Just lift your voice and say, I'm blessed. Amen. 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 Superintendent James Lewis is coming. Let everybody say praise the Lord. I enjoyed Elder Hughes. simply admonishing us to uh, praise the Lord. And the unique thing about it was he was admonishing us to praise the Lord together. I observed the Holy Ghost didn't come when they all got on one accord. He came when they all got with one accord. There's strength in unity. With all of the anointing and the inspiration is in this place, Deliverance is in the room now. You don't have to ask God to stop by. He's already here. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. I've been asked to expedite the offering, but there's an anointing on me now. Everybody in this room, be kind enough just to reach over and lay your hands on that person next to you. I've discovered in my almost 40 years of ministry that a lot of people are laughing on the outside, but they're hurting on the inside. God promised that if we would but petition him, let your request be known, that he would move in the mighty way. I'm going to ask you to do something else, and this is the beginning of the new year. Forget about all of your desires and promises for yourself I want you to pray for a few moments for that person next to you you don't know what people are going through I've been very touched and moved here in the last month or so I thought I had really grown past crying but I received a desperate letter from West Africa a brother over there that literally had nothing, destitute, doing mission work. And he simply said that, could you send me some old clothes, old shoes, anything? He says, as I go around in these different villages, he says, the people have nothing. And I began to think about how blessed I am. And before I know it, I choked up and dropped my head and cried there on my desk. And I went and presented it to my company. Drench my heart as my lips part your praise. Come on, help me sing it, please. Precious Jesus. How I love you. How I love How I lift high my voice. With your, praise. With your praise, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I implore thee, I implore thee. Drench, my heart. drench my heart as my lips, as my lips part, part your praise. Your praise. Oh, I am persuaded. Lord, to love you, I have been changed. 
to bless your name. I am constrained by this great gospel forever to worship thee. Come on, sing it with me. I am persuaded. Lord, to love you. I have been changed to bless your name. I am constrained by this great gospel forever to worship thee. Come on and sing it again. and say forever to worship thee. Tell them forever I'll worship thee. Oh, tell them just one more time. Forever I'll worship thee. Come on, clap your hands and praise the Lord. Come on and praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. In each of our conventions, we try to have a theme song for that convention. And it seems that this has been the song that the Lord has given us for this wonderful, wonderful week of joy and inspiration. How many of you have been blessed in the workers' meeting this year? What is our theme for this week? Y2K. Yes to the kingdom. That's what Y2K is all about. How many of you went out and bought flashlights for Y2K? Don't be bashful. Raise your hand. You went out and bought flashlights getting ready for Y2K. Anybody buy water? A friend of mine had eight big barrels of water. Not buckets, barrels. Anybody catch a flight at 10 o'clock on New Year's Eve? Nobody was in the air. Billions of dollars of preparation for all of the glitches of Y2K and you didn't know Y2K actually meant yes to the kingdom? Yeah. Not just yes to the king, but when you say yes to the kingdom, yes to the king is implied in yes to the kingdom. But when you say yes to the kingdom, you're saying thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to do everything I can to establish the kingdom of God on this earth. Look at somebody else and tell them, I am a kingdom ambassador. I'm a diplomat. 
and I've got diplomatic immunity. What goes for other folk don't go for me. Other folk can't love their enemy. But I've got the Holy Ghost and I can love my enemy. Other folk ain't hungry and thirsting for the things of God. But I'm hungry and I'm thirsting for the more of God. Other folk are seeking for the material goods and the possessions and the things of this world, but I'm seeking first the kingdom and all of these things shall be added unto me. Other folk are worried about what the devil is doing and the way the devil is pushing them around, but the devil ain't pushing me around. He's under my feet. Look at your neighbor and say, if you've got a message for the devil, write it on the bottom of my shoe because the devil is under my feet. Jesus said, I give you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions and over all of the power of the enemy. Is anybody ready to get up and stomp on the devil? Come on, let's get him. Hallelujah. Oh, that's what you're doing when you shout. That's why we shout. Because we are stomping on the devil. Come on, let's get him for a while. Get your neighbor and say, I've got the victory. Tell somebody else, I've got victory. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. And I'm not subject to the laws of the world. The world can do anything to me it wants to. It can kill me. But when it kills me, it releases me to go into the presence of Almighty God. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I don't care what you're going through. The world may give you its worst. But one day the trump of God is going to sound. The dead in Christ are going to arise first. And we that are alive and remain are going to be. Yay! Yeah. Take your seats, everybody. Hallelujah. Take your seat, take your seats, everybody. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in you than is he that is in the world. Oh, let the devil puff and huff, carry on his shenanigans, but he's already defeated. Look toward your neighbor and say, the devil is already defeated. Well, let's praise God for the arrival of Evangelist Nathan Simmons. Let's praise God. Sister Simmons, 
little sister Simmons. Let's praise God for them. Let's praise God for Evangelist Twinkie Clark. Musical genius, songwriting prodigy, organ playing wonder, anointed woman of God, spectacular evangelist of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are overwhelmed that this wonderful young lady here in the city of Los Angeles that we have the opportunity of being exposed to her excellent ministry gifts and to participate in the love that she has for the Lord as she sings praises to his name in song the church of God in Christ is so highly highly blessed to have such a wonderful young woman among its members and what a privilege it will be to see her presented in concert on Saturday night. But she's going to be around doing stuff in our services and in our sessions as we approach the concert. Thank God for the two days of musical emphasis and stress that we will have the privilege of participating in. Pastors, get involved in the music of your church. The music of your church is so closely intertwined and related to your preaching ministry. And without close attention to your music, the church can never reach its potential. And to all of the musicians, the pastor sets the tone for the worship and the direction and the light of the music of your church. And if your pastor said, don't sing that, don't argue with him. I become bitter, upset with him. He is trying to feed the people and take them to a new level. It's not about the intricacy of the harmony of the melodic progression. It's it's not about uh, how wide a range your voice has, or uh, how intricate the chord may be, or. Uh, how spectacular a song may seem to be. The question is, does the Lord want to use the song to bless the people of the Lord? And songs have an integral function in the life of the worship and even in the salvation of people who would be saved. I was in a service one Sunday morning and at the end of the service, a lady came down, accepted the Lord. And uh, I, I don't know why I did it. I never do that. But I foolishly asked, what did I say? What was it that caused you to decide to come to Jesus today? And she said, oh, nothing. The choir said, if you've tried everything and everything has failed, try Jesus. And I decided that I wanted to try Jesus. I picked my face back up off the floor put it back on and was reminded that music is an evangelistic tool. It's an instrument of worship to God. And we must see ourselves standing before God and singing unto him. And I got the slightest suspicion that if God were actually present and Jesus was looking at us in our face, some of the gimmicks that we pull, we wouldn't quite pull them. Amen. Some curly cues that we put in there, we wouldn't do it. I mean, we'd sing it straight and with sincerity and with power as unto the Lord. And so when we sing unto him, then we ought to realize that our songs are offered up unto him. And then when we're singing, trying to win folk, we don't want to do anything in the song that would distract them. The goal and the objective that we have in singing to them. And that means music got to be at a certain level so you can hear what the singers are saying. And they've got to say it in such a way that you can recognize the words. All of that they're going to teach tomorrow. They're going to teach that. 
tomorrow and Saturday. And so, pastors, you've got to be here. Amen. Time and time again, I've met with my music staff and said, now, this is what we're trying to make happen in the worship service. This is the way we want to do it. These are the kind of songs we want to sing. And so move in that direction and be present, pastors, on tomorrow. It'll be a blessing to you. Thank you, Pastor Ron Gibson, Life Church, for your leadership of worship of praise. How wonderful, how wonderful. It came out in force. Thank you, State Choir, Sister Judy McAllister, all of the musicians. God bless you. Thank you, Reverend Charles Hughes, for that spectacular message on tonight. Mr. Holy Ghost. We enjoyed him so much. Missions Department, you were such a blessing to us as you carried forth the wonderful Missions Emphasis program. Millions of people are dying on the African continent from the disease of AIDS. In Africa, for every five men who have AIDS, six women have AIDS. And thousands and thousands are dying every day. Problem number one on the continent of Africa is the epidemic of AIDS that is sweeping across that nation. And AIDS is a heterosexual disease. And thousands and thousands, even in our own nation, are being afflicted. And they need our help, not only in that area, but in a host of other areas. And just the other day, West Angeles sent off $5,000 to combat some of the terrible blight, disease, and hunger that exist on the continent of Africa. Thank you, Pastor Lewis, for your deep concern and involvement in situations that are there. And it is through our missions department that we will have the effective ministry to those who are afar and those who are in the foreign field. Thank you, Superintendent Lenore, for being our MC tonight. Let's praise God for him. And uh, Brother Lewis for assisting us in the offering time today. And let me also say that if you missed our state supervisor today, you missed a tremendous blessing. She was awesome and then got down there and started calling out sicknesses and diseases and the power of the Lord was upon her to heal and, and to set free and oh how we enjoyed our state supervisor on today. God bless you, I will not make further observations. I think you're ready to hear the man of God tonight. Are you ready to receive from the Spirit of the Lord? How many of you want to know what God has to say to you on tonight? God has a word for you. And it will come to you through the servant of the Lord. Is there any special music before? Oh, there is special music? Oh, wonderful. I was hoping there was special music. Before the man of God comes to share the word of the Lord, our beloved sister, Sister Twinkie Clark, is going to minister to us. After she has finished, the man of God, our beloved guest and brother, will come to share the word with us. When he stands, let us stand and receive him with rousing applause. bless you sir we, we honor the Lord for being here this evening and count it a privilege to be able to come and be a part of this great workers meeting 
I'm so thankful for the invitation and to Bishop Blake and to all of the other officials and to Sister McAllister. I'm just honored to be here and I look forward in taking part with the music department. We just look at a neighbor and say, no matter how bad it may seem, it's working for your good. If you can just accept what God allows, accept what God allows, you better
means to praise him in the midst of your test. Praise him in the midst of your storm. I can say, thank you, Lord. If you're glad to be in the year 2000, say thank you, Lord. trial is just a stepping stone it will lead you come on and help me say it quiet if you believe that what you've been through is gonna take you to something greater say it will lead you if you believe a blessing's gonna come out of it say it will just a few moments if you possibly will um, I don't want to appear ritualistic or to appear to just do something just to be doing it but I saw this in the spirit and tonight throughout this workers time of meeting I'm going to ask the people of God if you'll be so kind as to intercede for the person who's maybe standing beside you or on the other side I ask this in the spirit for I saw it Will you kneel in prayer and intercede and pray for the feet of the person while they have their hands lifted before the presence of Almighty God? And then we shall switch, begin interceding for that person tonight. The laborers in the vineyard, the persons in the Holy Ghost. There's a place in God. There's a people that go. Just intercede for. Just intercede for. See God take them where He must take them in the Spirit. That's it. Intercede in the Holy Ghost. Intercede for that man. Come on. Intercede for that woman now. Come on. That's it. Now won't you switch? Reverse the role. Switch now. Switch now. Come on. Come on, just intercede with them now. Come on. Come on. That's it. 
That's it. The spirit tonight, we're interceding. Yes. 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 Now with that person's hand elevated in the spirit. Now with that person's hand elevated in the Holy Ghost. And we lift up holy hands. That's it. Intercede with them even now. In praise. Nashpadri bekosh padaraban si okosha. Now again in the spirit, I feel the heat. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, there's another level here. Come on, come on. Come on. I said, Baba, we are. With the clapping of our hands, we say thank you. Come on, I hear the victory clap. Come on. Oh. Come on. Come on. Oh. And the Holy Ghost tonight won't you lift your voices because there's a sound that we're hearing we haven't heard it yet but in the Holy Ghost tonight is the night if I heard him say tonight is the night of release But there are breakthroughs coming in the spirit realm. So with everything you've got, with everything you have within you, won't you wrap back and just give him the kind of glory that releases his hand.
Cristo, nós te amamos de boca oceana. So, Master, we say thank you tonight. We so lift you and glorify you for your goodness and for your mercy. We thank you because you're God. Because you're Alpha and because you're Omega. You're the beginning and you're simply the end. I appreciate you, Master, for this that you're doing and that you're doing. That you're doing in the now. For you're bringing things into fruition that our eyes have never behold. You're causing things in the spirit to take course and set form and face. And we say thank you for it. And we so lift you tonight, oh God. And we glory in thy presence and in thy presence alone. Holy Spirit, have your way tonight. I beseech you by the mercies of God to sit Nathan Simmons down and stand up Holy Ghost of God and have your way. I need you, Jesus. I asked you, Master, to anoint us. Give us clarity of speech and precision of thought, understanding of your word and take us into the will of your knowledge. Part unto us the wisdom that's necessary. Only you can speak to the vastness of the needs of this thy people. These are your people, God. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak in this auditorium tonight. Sit Nathan Simmons down. And stand up, God Almighty, and speak your word tonight. My only request, O oh Master, is that you would be kind and favor us with your anointing. For this cause, we've come aside. We stand humble before you in your presence. Master, we've given our lives. For this night and for this purpose, please, Lord, don't let a man, woman, boy, or girl leave this auditorium the same way they've come in. Master, tonight heal, deliver, and set free. Master, tonight heal, deliver, and set free. Master, tonight heal, deliver, and set free. The name of Jesus. Oh my God, tonight. Anoint me, Lord. Anoint me, Jesus. Anoint me or else. Anoint me or else. Anoint me or kill me. Anoint me or kill me. I don't want to live without your anointing. I don't want to live without your anointing, Lord. Oh, Jesus, I give you my word. For the rest of my life, I'll give you glory. 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 I'll give you the honor. 
I'll give you the praise because you're God. In this house, in this time, in this place. Mm. We bless you for every leader. We bless you for every leader, for every man of God. For every shepherd that has been given the responsibility of watching for us, we pray for our leaders. We pray for our shepherds, God. If your pastor's anywhere in proximity of this house, would you point your hand in his direction and just ask God Almighty to bless him, keep him, heal him cause vision to come into being come on intercede for your leader come on I don't know why the Lord said to do it tonight and while we're leading and while we're praying we're praying for our bishop we're praying for Bishop Blake come on some get him and undergird him in the Holy Ghost tonight come on undergird him in the Holy Ghost tonight for every superintendent for every administrator for every district superintendent, for every leader that makes up this august body, this state, we're praying. Come on, I can't hear you. We're praying for our church. Come on. Come on, the church of God in Christ. Come on. We're praying for our sainted mother, Mother Lewis. Come on, intercede. We're praying for every district missionary. Every pastor's wife must be an honorable because she be at We're praying for every general board member. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We're praying, we're praying, we're praying. Zion and Bishop Owens is going under the operating table on tomorrow. The cancer's moving throughout his body. We're praying for God to touch him. Come on. Come on. Come on. Touch him. Touch. 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 Touch now. Go over to Jersey on the other part of the continent on the other side of the America touch now hey shut up on the other touch him touch him now God the doctor's hand and then never should not about the bus about as they're cutting and clipping taking a mercy by the book you do the work Lord you're the God that can do anything and we're looking to you here you're God that's able and undergird the family Jesus name and we're so thankful to you now thankful to you now Thankful to you now. Mm. Shabbat Abu Kushia Baba Baka. And we clap our hands and say, Thank you, Lord. Hey. I honor the Lord Jesus tonight for his goodness and for his mercy unto us. God is God. God is God. God is God. Confess to your neighbor, God is God. No, no, no. This time, don't say it real nice and smooth. I want you to say it like you know he's got all power come on right back and say God is God say 
praying like you know he's in charge. Tell him God is God. Just lean on somebody and tell them, oh yes he is. And I bless him because he is God. And I honor him because he's God all by himself. I reverence the Lord tonight for our bishop. Won't you put your hands together for presiding bishop? While we're appreciating the Lord, can we appreciate God for these tremendous men of God that stand along with him, our administrators and superintendents. To all of our pastors and especially to our sainted saint supervisor, our own mother Lewis, won't you clap your hands in? I love her so very dearly and so very much. Uh, Again tonight, I'm somewhat, because I studied and prepared something totally different, and as I sat uh, here in the sanctuary, the Holy Spirit just said, not tonight, something totally different. So how many just want to hear from God? <laughs> Confess it to your neighbor, I just got to hear from God. The word of the Lord is found in the book of Second Chronicles, a very familiar portion of Honor the Lord for my wife and for all of the beautiful people of God that have gathered here tonight. And um, we'll begin just reading this 20th chapter. And it's one that most of us have heard before. We've read it. We've knowledgeable of it. But for some reason, the Holy Spirit said to share this tonight and we bless him for it. And he began at the reading of God's word. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon were with them on the other side beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat saying there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, there be in Hazan Tamar, which is in Jadi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judea. Then verse number 12 says, O our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. But our eyes are upon thee. Verse number 14. Then upon Jehazal, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benai, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a leader of the sons of Asim, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's. Touch your neighbor and say, God's got this one. Tomorrow go ye down against them and behold, come up by the cliff of Zis, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeriel. Ye shall not need fight in this battle. Set yourselves and stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed to mark God against them, for the Lord will be with you. Verse number 22. And when they begin to cry the blues, And when they began to feel sorry for themselves 
And when they got so upset that they forgot to lift their hands and praise the Lord. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitened. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end to the inhabitants of Mount Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked into the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with dead bodies and precious Jews. Look at somebody say, look at God. Which they stripped off of themselves more than they could carry away. They were three days in the gathering of the spoil. It was so much. On the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka and there they blessed the Lord. Therefore the name of the same place was called the valley of Baraka unto this day. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. And they came to Jerusalem with psalteries and with hearts and with trumpets in the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet for his God gave him rest round about him. That may not seem like enough to be anything tonight, but I'm going to ask you to do me a favor and forgive me if it doesn't seem uh, uh, very exhausted in its vocabulary, but do me a favor and look at somebody and just tell your neighbor these words. Look at them dead in the face, eyeball to eyeball, and say, neighbor, yeah. God, said, God said, don't worry, don't worry. I, got I got this one. Touch your neighbor on the other side and say to them, oh, don't worry about this. God said, I got this one. Uh, look at somebody we across the room and say, hey. Tell them, God said, don't worry. I've got this one. Gang, simple in its form and its fashion. I am convinced that the people of God have come to a place in this last hour where we must understand and recognize who God simply is in this last hour. Lay hands on yourself if you will, uh -huh, as if you've got to pull yourself away from the battle, away from the struggle, away from the intent of it, away from the contents of the situation thereof. It's so engrossed you, but I hear God saying, lay hands on yourself and say these words, say whatever you do, now, you do now don't worry about it god said i got this one clap your hands and tell god thank you This is the hour that God Almighty is moving circumspectly amongst the people of God like never before. This is the hour that God Almighty has brought the children of God to a place where we are focused, where we are strong now. We are finding ourselves moving in the exploits of the things of God. God now is comprehensively bringing the people of God to a place whereby which our understanding is, is this, that it's all about God now. I'm convinced that this is the hour that we found ourselves going through the subliminal changes we've gone through all of the external concepts we've gone through all of those things that would funnel and channel our ways and concept in place but now God has got us right where he wants us where we now recognize that our dependency is totally upon him that it's in him we live we move we breathe and simply have our being I am convinced believer that this is the hour that God circumspectly has got 
individuals in a place where we recognize that nothing happens in the life of believers except God wills it so so that ultimately there's got to be a reason why I'm experiencing what I'm experiencing in the now I am convinced that God Almighty has got many of us backed up into a corner and we can't do nothing now but look to the hills from which cometh our help and know that our help now cometh from the Lord I am convinced believer that God now is causing the saints of God to put their priorities in the right place we're recognizing that as God is who he says he is and he's going to do exceedingly and abundantly above that that we even asked or think I am convinced now that God is no longer going to play second fiddle. He's no longer going to be second place. He's going to be all submit or he's going to be nothing. And for that cause tonight, I am convinced that God Almighty wants the people of God to know that whatsoever the trial, the test, the tribulation, the circumstance, the temptation, the sickness or even the depravity of past that he is the true and living God and with him all things are possible and nothing can be impossible when you understand that tonight you recognize the strategies by which God now develops the life of believers in this last day but now in order for us to grasp the full meaning I ask tonight that you leave this place that you now sojourn with me in the spirit that you move now back into a time that we leave this atmosphere this hemisphere now that's conducive that we go beyond Saturn and Mars and Jupiter beyond now the 12 gates of the city so that we can walk down the streets that have been paved with gold into the inner chamber of the sanctuary of the most high God so that we can now sit down in heavenly places at the feet of the Messiah and hear what the spirit says unto the church of the living God we're walking back in time to the year 896 years before the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ it's an awesome 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 time now because Israel and Judea have now merged in concept when you look at this now you'll understand that Jehoshaphat has now joined affinity the Bible says with Ahab when this thing happens you'll understand that the combustion now comes into being God now sits high and looks low and wonders what in the world is going on when Jehoshaphat does this the Bible says now anything that Ahab experiences it now must be channeled and experienced by Jehoshaphat the Bible says he actually lost everything now of his own personality and clout that had been given unto him he now says my people shall be as your people and your people now shall be as mine and so here now Jehoshaphat and Ahab have so joined in affinity but when this thing happens the Bible says now Jehoshaphat goes now into territories and ways by which he's never been called Israel is used to fighting they're used to warring they're used to being challenged and threatened because from generations past they are stiff necked hard headed and rebellious but Judah on the other hand is not used to fighting and using the artilleries that Israel is used to they're used to dealing in the realm of the spirit because when you look at them the questions ask continually uh, how can they win the battles that they win uh, and who shall we sin first uh, reply comes now sin Judah uh, not because they've been trained in artillery or in weaponry uh, but because they'll use the simplicity of lifting their hands uh, they'll open their mouths uh, and they'll give God glory uh, uh, when they pray something happens uh, when they pray something moves when they praise deliverance is wrong 
And so here now we understand God now merges these and because of that now the enemies of Israel now become the enemies of Judea. Bible says it now comes to pass when Moab and Ammon would come and launch their attack against firstly Jehoshaphat and then Judea. Bible, the Bible declares that when this thing takes place we wonder within the loins of our mind why would anybody want to attack Jehoshaphat? He's a man that walks up right before God. He's one of the last of the righteous kings thereof that have walked in the obedience of God in pleasing in his ways. This man understands the integrity thereof of his spirit. Why would anybody attack him? And it was then that I understood that it was because of what Jehoshaphat represented. You see Jehoshaphat represented individuality. And it's something about when you're an individual you have somehow another your own mind, your own thought, your own creed, your own belief factor. And people tend to not like individuals who are different and individual in their concept. But look at somebody and say, don't mind me, I'm just an individual. Uh, yes, there's nothing wrong uh, with me being an individual. Uh, uh, it's nothing wrong now with me just having the thought thereof of my own. Uh, but we have a tendency not to like individuals who are different, who are different in their concept, who are different in their belief factor. Uh, and because of that, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says uh, their attack now comes up against your host of that. But what I like about your host of that is his name for his name now in the Hebrew means this he who has been judged by God it's something about when you know that you've been judged by God you are not moving in the formula of insecurity your faith now becomes secure in the fact that you know in whom you believe and that you're persuaded that he's able to do anything but fail uh, when you know who you are you're not moved by what anybody says by what anybody does you're not moved by what anybody has you recognize the same God that took time and blessed them he can certainly bless and so here now we see the attack coming up against Jehoshaphat I wondered why would they attack him and it was then that God began to share with me that the attacks always come to the head first notice whatever you experience it affects the body and your head whatever you do now it affects your head if you hit your hand your head will be affected by it. If you stomp your toe, your head will be affected by it. Whatever you experience, it will affect your head. And because of that believer, we must not understand and appreciate why God has given us pastors and leaders and set them in authority on the headship now of the church. When you understand that, you'll have a better respect for your pastor. You won't stay home from Sunday the service and just think well he won't miss me uh, he don't mind no whatever you go through affects your pastor it affects your head I can't hear nobody when you're sick it affects your head when you're going through spiritually it affects your pastor I can't hear nobody and so the launch now of the attack was not necessarily just to you but what happens it is affecting your head when you recognize that I wondered why it was that this people would attack Judea and it was then that God said Nathan 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 don't you know that the enemy likes to attack anybody that knows how to use the weapon of pray 
praise. He don't mess with folks that are not praises. He mess with people that'll shout when they don't have a dime in their pocket. He'll mess with individuals that'll shout when the doctor told you you got cancer. You'll shout all in the doctor's office. He messes with individuals that when the worst things of situations take place, in spite of everything, their testimony is in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning me. Uh, so the enemy attacks praises uh, but then I wondered why particularly this people would attack them and it was then that I looked at Moab uh, and I looked at Ammon uh, Ammon and Moab uh, were the descendants thereof uh, and found themselves being most pious uh, and most rich individuals uh, they were people that usually inhabited mountainous areas uh, but yet they were found in valley kind of places uh, I wondered why it was uh, that they were out of their place. God said that he would, that we would go from mountaintop to mountaintop experience, from glory even unto glory, but yet we find ourselves in the valley of indecision, in the valley of depression, in the valley thereof of the shadows of death. Then I wondered what it was about the Moabites and the Ammonites. He said, Nathan, their wealth was known throughout all of the kingdom and throughout all of the land. Everyone knew that they were the wealthy individuals thereof that stand. But these people had split personalities. Oh, when I looked, I said, Lord, I wondered what kind of personality they would have. They were warlike in their nature because they would war against the children thereof, of Israel and then Judea. But then they could be very kind like in their nature because Ruth was was a Moabite. I wondered, wondered, wondered what it was and how and then I compared them to the saints. Believe it or not, we're dealing with saints that have split now personalities. Sometimes you see them, they're happy and then sometimes you see them, they're sad. Then sometimes they get mad because you didn't know they were glad. Oh, one minute we're shouting and speaking in tongues and swinging off the chandelier huh? and the next week we wonder if God is really who he says he is split now personalities but when you look now at their genealogy you'll understand that the inside of a man is what is in demonstration in their manifestations of outward appearances what I mean by that is simply this it's what's in a man that counts that will come forth on the outside whatever is in you is going to come out sooner or later you can hide it you can tuck it in nice and neat but if you're nasty if you're mean it won't be long before that attitude will start projecting itself if you're arrogant if you're snooty you can try to walk humble all you want but it won't be long before that pride will deceive you I can't hear nobody uh, and so the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says uh, it comes to pass now in history that Moab was Lot's youngest daughter's son uh, and Ammon was Lot's your oldest daughter's son uh, and that was marvelous in the being uh, and that made of course Lot uh, who was their father and descendants thereof, uh, their father and even uh, their grandfather uh, but now incest was committed uh, in other words the father Lot now went to bed with his daughters and now they conceived and brought forth children now can you understand why this people was so mixed up within the loins of their mind they didn't know whether to call their father father or grandfather or uncle it was all mixed up in the mind and when people are mixed up in their mind they'll try to mix you up in your mind I can't hear nobody they'll be envious and jealous of you uh, but don't worry about jealousy uh, when you see the spirit of jealousy uh, you ought to feel sorry for the person uh, because jealousy is only the outward manifestation of a struggle that's happening on the inside uh, it's only the result of insecurity uh, so that whenever there's insecurity there will be an outward manifestation of jealousy 
now the reason why a person is insecure is because they don't know who they are when you don't know who you are you'll try to be everybody else when you don't know who you are you'll get mad with anybody that is anybody uh, but when you know who you know and you know who you are you recognize that the sun shines upon the just as well as the unjust that the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away bless it be the name of the Lord uh, that all things come of thee O Lord uh, and of thine own have you given uh, you recognize I'm not worried uh, about what you got uh, I'm not going to be insecure uh, I'm not going to be jealous uh, I'm going to ask you where you got it from uh, I can hear <laughs> tell your neighbor that devil is a liar <laughs> and so the Bible the Bible said uh, they launched their attack now uh, I'm almost finished I know you can't believe it uh, the Bible the Bible the Bible says uh, it now comes to pass children of God uh, when the children of Moab uh, and the children of Ammon uh, now launched their attack against the children uh, of Judea uh, but they didn't know who they were messing with uh, because when you when you when when you, when you uh, are in God's hand, uh, you recognize if God before you, uh, he's more than the whole world against you. Uh, you recognize, touch not my anointed, uh, and do my prophets no harm. Uh, and I, I heard him say, I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, Jehoshaphat, the Bible said, uh, found himself fearing. Uh, now when he does this, uh, the Bible said he feared. Uh, but I looked up the root word of the word fear. Uh, that's why I love studying the Greek and Hebrew lexicon. Because for one English word, uh, there's 1,000 Greek or Hebrew. Uh, uh, the word here now uh, was not fear of sleeping in the dark. Uh, it was not a fear of wondering what was going to happen. Uh, he already knew that the Bible says, fear not, lest the thing you fear should come upon you. Uh, he already understood uh, that God has not given us uh, the spirit of fear, uh, but of love, uh, of power, uh, and a sound mind. Uh, he understood, uh, I've got nothing to fear, uh, but fear fear itself and so the Bible said it now comes to pass when he set himself to fear but the root word here is reverential fear in other words an honorable fear that's why the scripture says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom the fool hath said in his heart that there is no God when you fear God you'll be like Mephibosheth Mephibosheth reverenced and bowed down his head and said who am I such a dead dog that you would look upon me and have me eat at your table so he was in reference to God he submitted his way and said God I don't know what to do and here the Bible says he declared a fast I don't know how it happened but the men and the women the boys and the girls I believe the dogs and the cats and the fish went on the fast too. Uh, nobody in the city uh, found themselves eating, uh, drinking, or anything being merry. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that while they were fasting, uh, they didn't just stay there hungry, uh, but they started talking to God. Uh, now there's something about talking to God. Uh, you can talk to your mama, uh, but it's not like talking to God. Uh, you can talk to your daddy, uh, but it's not like talking with God you can talk to me but it's not like talking to God the songwriter said have a little talk with Jesus tell him all about your problems the Bible declares that when they started talking to God he said oh our God we are not able we are not able will thou not judge them this great company that cometh against us we are not able to stand up against them neither 
doesn't know we what to do what I like about it is he was honest with God I'm convinced believer if you go get anything from God you got to be honest the Bible says confess your fault and he's faithful to forgive come let us reason together though your sins be as scarlet I'll wash them whiter than snow I heard the Bible say that when they got through talking he said wait a minute God I don't know what to do I don't know where to turn sometimes it looks like things get so out of control that you don't know where to go don't know what to do back is up against the wall look like everything is going haywire but don't give up don't throw in the towel stand still God I feel like preaching and believe it or not you know I'm almost finished the Bible said it came to pass that when this thing happened he said I don't know I don't know I don't know what to do but my eyes are on you it's like David said look to the hills from which coming my help my help come from the Lord I heard Paul say looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of my faith tell your neighbor I'm not worried about my enemies I'm not worried about which way to go I'm gonna look to God The Bible said that while he was standing there, I heard a young man while the king was standing there praying. Come on, be my king. The king, the Bible said, Jehoshaphat was standing there. All of a sudden, the Bible said, here comes a little priest. Here comes a little prophet. He wasn't the best dress. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He wasn't Mr. Popular. Everybody didn't know who he was. I can't hear nobody. They didn't know who his mama was. They didn't know who his daddy was. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. But how many know that when you really want to hear from God, you don't care about no stuff. You don't care about no paper. You don't care about no license. You don't if God can use a rooster, then God can use anybody. If God can use a jackass, God can use anybody. Tell your neighbor, God, God wants to use you. Anybody that will say, yeah, yeah. He told him. He said, oh, King Jehoshaphat. He said, oh, King Jehoshaphat. He said, I've got something to say. I know you don't know me. I'm a nobody in the kingdom. I have been a long time. But my name is Jehoshaphat. And I've got a word from the Lord. And the word is, King, you shall not need fighting this battle. Be not dismayed. Whatever you be tired. God told me to tell you, you don't have to fight in this battle battle this battle is not yours it belongs to God I heard him say in other words God said go on back I got this one you ain't got to worry about it it's my problem it's my situation it's my He said, you don't have to worry. He said, all right now, but you do have to do this. You have to take heed to the instructions. Now, I know we don't believe it, but the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. I can't hear no better. And the Bible declares that he told him to hearken under his word. He said, I'm going to tell you what God said. Normally, you would fight in the battle. Normally, you would need guns, you need sword, you need shield, you need helmet, but lay that stuff down. You don't need no knives or guns. 
all you gotta do uh, is stand still uh, and while you're standing uh, go by the cliff uh, calls this uh, now the cliff calls this uh, in the Hebrew uh, is called the place uh, of projection uh, where I can be heard uh, loud and clear uh, if there's anywhere uh, I want to be uh, is loud and clear now the brook called Jeriel, everybody say Jeriel, is called the place that God chose or God found it. I don't know about you, but if there's anywhere I want to be, it's where God chose me to be, when he wants me to be there, how he wants me to be there. The worst thing in the world is to be out of place. The worst thing in the world is to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I want to be where God is. For where God is, is heaven to me. It may be in hell, but if he's there, I'll be happy. It may be in heaven, but if he's there, I'll be glad. I want to go wherever God chose, wherever God said, say yeah, 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 say yeah. I'm almost there. The Bible said when they got there in the place called the trace of Jeriel, he said, I'll tell you what I need now. He said, you know what you need? He said, what I need, son? He said, you need some singers. You need some singers. What kind of singers do you need? You need some sopranos. Sopranos. You need some autos. Now this time, you got to be careful because you need some tenors that sing tenor. We don't need no sinners to sing tenor, to sing soprano. I can't hear nobody. He got him some singers, and when he told him to sing, the Bible said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I want you to do me a favor. When you stand by the cliff, cause this, stand right by the cliff and open up your mouth and say, Praise ye the Lord. Don't worry about how you sound. Don't worry about how to hold the notes. Don't worry about how long you've been singing. Don't worry about who hears your voice. Don't worry about who sees you singing. Don't worry about how you look open up your mouth stand by the cliff stand by the cliff now while while they were standing Lord can I illustrate a little bit come on say preach Nathan preach While they were standing and singing, God raised up an army. Oh, I can't hear nobody. He got them some young men that knew how to fight. Come on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Uh-huh. Come on. Get your sword in your hand. You've been trained in artillery. You know how to fight. Come on. You ready? Then he got them. The Mobites and the Ammonites. Let me see. Let me see who looks like a Mobite. My brother here, my brother here, my brother there. My brother here. He said, oh, no, man, not me. Need a mobile. A mobile. You got a mobile? Yeah, okay. Thank you, Jesus. Mobile. 
Ammonite? Moabite? Ammonite chewing gum? Come on. So here go the Moabites and the Ammonites. Now these were some tough dudes. They were tough. Come on. They, they were tough. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you so much. I really appreciate you. Now, here, they're ready to fight. They don't have no might against all these men. So here they go. He said, I tell you what, put down your sword. Put down your shield, put it down. Now while you all start singing, Now, this time, because y'all the ones getting ready to fight, say his mercy endureth forever. Praise the Lord! His mercy endureth forever! 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 Wow! While they were singing and praising the Lord, the Bible said the Moabites and the Ammites came against them to battle. Come on, get ready to start fighting them. Come on, get ready to fight. But now y'all don't fight. Just stand still. Just stay right there. Come on, fight them boys. They got to fighting those boys. They got to try to whoop those boys. They got to try to beat them up. I can't hear nobody. Come on, try to fight, fight, fight. But they don't fight the battle. They started singing. They started praising him. They started giving God glory. Instead of fighting, they lifted up their hands. They opened up their mouths. They started praising God. I know you don't understand it. I know you don't understand it, but it's something about holding your peace. They told me years ago, if I hold my peace, the Lord will fight my battle. Tell your neighbor, shut up, stop fighting, sit down, step back, let God do it, get out the way, God's about to move. The Bible said uh, that when they started uh, praising the Lord, uh, the Lord, uh, not them, uh, but the Lord, uh, I said the Lord, uh, strong and mighty, uh, the Lord, uh, mighty in battle, uh, started fighting there. Uh, and the Bible said, uh, one by one, uh, they dropped down uh, like dead bodies uh, right before their very eyes. Uh, I know you don't understand it, uh, but you ain't got to worry. Uh, about your enemies, I dare you, when somebody don't like you, shout all in their face, shout all on their toes, stand in praise. And while you're praising him, the Bible said, while they praise God, y'all ain't praising God, while they praise God, while they leaped, y'all ain't leaping, while they shouted, y'all ain't dancing, come on and dance, come on and dance, while they praised him, while they praised him, the Lord, the Lord fought their battle, and the Bible said that Judah went to the watch tower huh, and looked out huh, over the multitude huh, and they were dead bodies huh, falling in the grave huh, not escaped huh, they were all dead huh, while they praised God huh, what you saying huh, the Bible said huh, they got to praising them so huh, and then before you know it huh, the Bible said huh, they went to those men huh, and started gathering huh, so much spoil huh, they got gold huh, they got silver huh, they got diamonds huh, they got Ruby. 
They got pearls. They got more than they could carry away. They got so much stuff. They didn't know what to do with it. They were three days in the gathering. It was so much. But the law quieted the round about them. And I hear God saying, I want to do the same thing for you. I want you to hold your peace. I want you to forget about what you don't have. Forget about all your problems. Forget about all your tests. Forget about the situations. Forget about all the hurt. Forget about all the pain. And wow, wow, while you're standing there, give me glory. Because when you praise me, you're untying my hand. When you praise me, you're unleashing my power. When you praise me, you're building me a throne. When you praise me, you're giving me glory. When you praise me, you're saying, God, you're Alpha. When you praise me, you're saying, God, you're Omega. When you praise me, you're saying, God, you're the first. God, you're the last. You're saying, God, if you can't do it, it can't be done. And when you praise him, God said, all right, get out the way. All right, step back. All right, step and there, uh, all right, uh, hold your peace, uh, ah, Alpha, uh, ah, Omega, uh, ah, your deliverer, uh, I'm uh, your way maker, uh, I'm fighting uh, your battle, uh, I'm making uh, ways uh, out of no way, uh, what are you saying, uh, I'm saying pastor, uh, I'm saying elder, uh, I'm saying evangelist, I'm saying worker. God said, Don't worry about how the house belong to me. Don't worry about when in my own time your chains will come. I heard God saying, While you're there, praise me. I'll make the way. Praise me. I'll deliver. Praise me. I'll bring you through. Praise me, huh? and while you're praising me, huh? I'll fight your battle. Huh? While you're praising me, huh? I'll deliver you out. Huh? While you're praising me, huh? I'll heal your body. While you're praising me, huh? I'll make the way. Huh? Out of no way, while you're praising me, I'll save your son. While you're praising me, I'll deliver your daughter. While you're praising me, I'll heal the cancer. While you're praising me, I'll heal the high blood. While you're praising me, I'll heal the arthritis. While you're praising me, I will, I will, I'll deliver. I will bring you out. I will make the way, make the way out of no way. While you're praising me, I, 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 I will, I will, I will move. I'll bring you out of darkness into the marvelous light. can do uh, anything uh, but fail uh, but I want you uh, to bless me uh, praise me uh, in the morning uh, praise me uh, in the new day uh, praise me uh, in the midnight hour uh, bless me uh, be like David uh, tell yourself I uh, will bless the Lord uh, at all times uh, his praises uh, shall continually uh, be in my mouth uh, my soul, my soul, my soul, my soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad in everything, in everything, not some, not a little bit, but in every. I said every, I said every, I said every, I said every, everything, every little thing, every big thing. Every great thing, every small thing, I will, I will, I will, I will. I got 
the blessing. I got the blessing. You know why? Because I heard him say, don't worry. He said, don't worry. He said, don't worry. Do me a favor. Help me preach this thing. Say, Nathan, go ahead on the preach boy. Come on, say, preach boy, preach boy, preach. Go ahead on the preach son. Now listen, this is what I heard. He said, to tell you these words, he said, help me preach this. Get somebody by the hand, look them dead in the face, and say, if I never preach again, I want you to hear my sermon. God said, I didn't say it. God said, my mama didn't say it. My daddy didn't say it. The preacher didn't say it. God said, don't worry. I got it. I got it now. I got your healing. I got your deliverance. I got your power. I got the victory. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. tell you no lie I feel like running I said I feel like shouting I said I feel like leaping all over this building because some of y'all just like me got some situations you've done all you can and you can't do no more but tell your neighbor and this convention in this workers meeting I ain't gonna cry another tear tell them like this dry the tears from your eyes weeping 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 for a night but joy I said joy 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 Tell your neighbor So if God got it What am I worried about Now if this is the position That I should have now If God got it intact If God got it under control If God got everything in his hand Then tell your neighbor Why am I worried about it I want you to look at somebody and tell them I ain't worried about nothing. It's in God's hands now. God said, don't worry. I got Now I got one question to ask. If God got it, then what are you worried about? And if you're not worried, show me how you act when you know God got it all under control. Now listen, hold up, hold up. Hold up now, hold up. Oh, God. Wait, hold up. Wait a minute. Hold up. Now, can I tell you what? Touch your name and say, if we gonna praise him, we gotta give him crazy praise. So you can't get nothing, just stand up. stand pulpit to the back door everything in here at the count of three even if you don't know how to shout run wait a minute skip holler leap praise them like you're going crazy one two three pra-
Now listen. Get somebody by the hand. Get him by the hand. And tell him if you ain't gonna worry, and I'm not gonna worry, then I want you to help me pray something. Help me dance. person by the hand. Turn around and I want you to look at them like and say to them, I heard the Lord. I heard it when he spoke. And I'm not going to worry. For some reason, I don't feel that of the Lord to lay hands. I kind of think the Lord is already. Did it. But just testify to the person and tell them I'm not going to worry. God said. don't belong to you. It doesn't belong to me. 
this battle belongs to God. And I just heard the Holy Ghost say these words. He said, tell him I'm already fighting for him. I'm already working it out for him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He said, tell him it's already We're going to stop, but I want you to touch eight people and say, God said, done, done. Now, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold up, hold up, hold up. Please don't just touch. Done. 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 No, 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 no. Because every person you get ready to touch, you don't know what kind of battles they're you don't know what kind of situations I can hear about it. So when you speak the word done, you're shaking the devil. You're uprooting the enemies. You might just be snatching them out the... Now go ahead on, touch them. Done. Stop. Oh, oh, I shot out of my gap. Well, don't just look at her. She ain't the only one that got it done. I can't hear nobody. Tell somebody that God did it for her. You know He did it for me. Hold on. Hold on. Everybody just stay right where you are. Listen to me. Listen to me. Ushers, man the doors. Please man the doors. 
Just man the doors, ushers, everybody in the building. <sighs> I heard the Lord say this, and I have to obey him as you were coming tonight. I am here this week because God said there's another level. And this next level is unlimited in its favor, in its prosperity, and in his blessings. Now listen to me. Every person under the sound of my voice in this auditorium tonight the Lord said I don't just want listen an offering I want a sacrifice touch your neighbor and say to them with the authority of God these words said God said he don't just want an offering He wants a sacrifice. And I'm not insensitive, Pastor Gibson. I'm not insensitive, my brother. You know. You know me in the spirit. Sister Judy, you know I'm not a person that just does things. Brother Williams, you know. But God Almighty said tonight, tonight, I know this is the workers' meeting. I serve in our church I minister in a great deal of meetings just like this here recently we've been just going to workers meetings and going to state convocations and, and revivals are just I, I, I'm, that's what I'm so looking forward to coming and being with pastor because it's almost like since Memphis the Lord took me from revival meetings to one night conventions and and it's different because in a meeting that's just one night, you don't have a chance to tap in and really see God take people to the levels in God. That, that's why if you notice in the last two years, three years, I was here for a whole week for the convocation. And now it's for a whole week for the workers meeting. California, there's something getting ready to happen that's about to blow the minds of the saints. God's about to elevate our leader. I heard God say you're going up with him. And I want you to get ready in the spirit because things are happening in the Holy Ghost that the devil said would never take place. But I heard God said, it is. I want you to do this and obey God. I'm not a liar. I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not a phony. I try to walk with the integrity of God so that, so that anywhere I've ever been, I can go back. And that was before Memphis. I can't hear nobody. Because there's got to be a before. Come on, somebody. But the Lord said this to me in the spirit. And I heard him say it. He said, Nathan, I want my people to make a sacrifice that will usher them into places in me where they've never been. Listen to me. Everybody in this building, I asked you to do this and hear God. Go into your wallets. Go into your pocketbooks. Go into your checkbook. Now hear me. God said, sacrifice and give me all of it. Give me 
all of it and watch me since I have it. Trust me with your life. Trust me with your finances. Trust me with everything that concerns you. And watch me make this night the difference in your very being. Listen to me. I'm asking you tonight in the Holy Ghost to hear God and obey him. What do you have to lose but everything to gain? All over this auditorium, Whatever you have on your possession, in your checking account, in your being, give it to the Lord tonight and watch God. I believe I'll be back in about two weeks in Riverside. Then the Lord said, and Bishop's not here right now, but the Lord said, I've got to come back to West Angeles and spend some time shutting in and fasting and praying with you and I normally don't leave a church on a Sunday but he said on a Sunday and through that week I saw it in the spirit we've been talking about it for the last three or four years coming and spend some time but it hasn't been the right timing but God said this is the year and I'm going to obey him and do what he said to do I have no tricks, no lies, no schemes. I have nothing to tell you but what God said. I put my whole life and ministry on the line. If God doesn't give it back to you, if God doesn't make the difference, if this night doesn't make the difference, come from wherever you are and don't wait on nothing and wait on nobody. You, you may have nothing but coins. You may have every dime, every dollar. Obey the Holy Ghost. Give him every dollar cent every dime every dollar you may have five hundred and forty five dollars in your pocket but give it to God you may have two thousand dollars in your checking account but I challenge you to write that check go for broke go for broke go for broke and watch God give it back to you please don't play with it empty it out to the very penny 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 Give him everything. Give him everything. Give him everything. Give him everything. Please make the sacrifice. Some of you, you're going to see and reap the benefits thereof. You're going to remember this night. You're going to write me. You're going to email me. And you're going to say to me, Brother Nathan Simmons, I was there on that Thursday night, sir. I heard the Lord speak it. I was there. And it was because of then that God made the difference in the now. Please obey the Lord. Please obey the Lord. Please obey the Lord. Please obey God. Please obey the Holy Ghost. You won't regret it. You'll only live to thank God. You'll only live to appreciate the Holy Ghost. You'll only live to rejoice in the Spirit because of this night. It's the Lord's doing. It's the Lord's doing. You have to know that only the Lord would lead me to do this. Only the Lord would speak like this. But obey him. Obey him. Obey him. Obey the Lord. I know that it it's a sacrifice and it hurts. But I challenge you in the Holy Ghost to obey God. Obey the glory of God. 
Obey the God of glory. You'll only live to thank God. Now with those hands lifted to receive from God, to receive from God, In the sanctuary of the Most High. Oh, Rabbi Satavachi Kutorabosia. I heard the Lord say this Take one of those hands and prophesy into the life of that person, speak into their lives. Tonight, right now, just begin speaking into that person.